In today's video, we're gonna tour Johnny's home on wheels that she built herself. So let's go. What is going on YouTube? Greetings from rural Missouri. We're at one of the four covered bridges in Missouri. Johnny introduced me to that. So this is a really cool backdrop to tour Johnny's van. For those that don't know, Johnny has a YouTube channel. She does a lot of live streams. She does a lot of cool van type videos. She built her own van and that's why we're here today. Let's go and check out Johnny's van. Hi, I'm Johnny from Johnny's Journey. This is my Ram ProMaster that I built out for travel nursing. I start my first assignment next week and decided that I was gonna do it from home on wheels. So I built it out myself and I'm super excited to give you guys a tour. Okay, so let's start with the outside. On top, I've got 600 watts of solar. I have two 200 watt panels and two 100 watt panels. I've got a small deck area that's 48 inches by 59 inches. And then I have the max air fan and the Wii Boost cell booster. Okay, so let's work our way inside the van. In front, I put swivel brackets on both the passenger seat and the driver's seat. And then I have the Lagoon swivel table. So that gives us a nice area to sit at while we're eating or while we're video editing. Above the Lagoon table, I have my attic. I didn't want that to have the open look, so I put a nice door on that that comes down and up there I keep my window shades, my first aid kit, stuff that I really don't get access to a lot but it has a closed in nice finished look. In my ProMaster, I have an area above the windshield that kind of is my catch all for my stuff that I want access to while I'm driving. Also in the front, I do have to keep my shoes there. I've got a little basket that I've got. I need hiking shoes and I need work shoes. So that just goes up front between the two seats as well. And then right next to the driver's seat, I actually have an ottoman so that when I'm in the driver's seat, I can elevate my feet after a long day, do my computer editing, and that ottoman turns into my shower. I did not want a shower that took up a humongous amount of space in the van. I wanted more usable seating, the ottoman. So my shower turns into a shower when I need it and when I don't need it, I put it away and I've got more seating area. Also opens up that area really, really well. And then Next is the kitchen area and I have a butcher block top and I wanted a deeper sink. So I do have a bar sink in there. It's nice and deep and wanted a faucet that I could also use outside to rinse off my feet after a hike. So my sink does spin around and I can also use it on the outside as well as the inside. I didn't want to run plumbing to the shower area. So underneath here, I have a six foot spray nozzle. It's a shower nozzle and that reaches plenty over to the shower. And then underneath the sink, I have my catch-all for all my cleaning products, my trash can. And I also uh, actually have a one gallon water container under there as well. And then next to the sink area, I have my utensils, my spices, my towels. And then I wanted an area in the van to hang up a couple of tops for my scrub tops. I did not want to fold them. I wanted that, that nice, non-wrinkled appearance while I'm at work. So I've got an area next to the refrigerator that I can have three or four hang-up shirts or a rain jacket if I want to. On, also on the counter, I do have enough space for my induction cooktop, my coffee pot, and then just a little cute area for my coffee cups and my hand sanitizers and soap products. All right, so then across from the sink is the dresser area. And I probably have a larger dresser area than most van builds but I knew that I was going to be full-time on the road and I wanted to take multiple season clothing with me so the drawers are very deep and there are four of them I've got two full drawers for clothing they also have slides on them so that at the end of the day I can empty my pockets and everything goes there it's my junk drawers two clothing drawers a pantry drawer and a full electronics drawer in the dresser now I do have a very unique dresser top. It is an epoxy poured dresser top. It is very unique and I 
love it. It is really one of the highlights of the, the build. And then next to the dresser is my toilet area. I also wanted another seat, so my toilet area doubles as seat, more seating too. I take the pad off, the door lifts up, and then everything is hidden away when not in use. There's plenty of space in there for extra toilet paper. I have the composting toilet. It's the Nature's Head composting toilet, and I love it. There's no odor. It is one of probably my favorite parts of the build. And then across from there would probably be my most favorite and that is the isotherm cruise 165 refrigerator it holds 5.1 cubic feet of space it is huge and i love it because i only want to shop once or twice in a two-week period so underneath the bed i also have a nice storage section in front of the bunk i've got an extra pull out table that i can use if i'm cooking or if i'm sitting on the seat then i also have a workstation that i can work at for those big utensils that don't fit everywhere i've got a nice drawer underneath there is a big drawer that houses all of my dishes. If I bring my Instapot on the road, it is the perfect height for that and my ice maker. My induction cooktop goes in there, all my plates, all my Tupperware, it is perfect. And then underneath that, I have the pullout step, which is how you have to get up on top of the bunk. So it's a pullout step, but it seconds as more pantry space. I put all my dry products in there and my canned goods because they're so heavy. And then underneath the refrigerator, I also utilize that space. When I've got my puppy with me, she is litter trained and that's where the litter box goes. But when she's not with me, I have a basket underneath there and that's where all my toiletry items go. And then the bed. <laughs> We made it the height that we did because we wanted to utilize as much space in the back of the van for the garage area. I have a lot of hobbies and I wanted to be able to take as much of those with me on the road that I could. So the bed has enough area that when I sit on top of it, I clear the ceiling and that's enough. We wanted that area to be nice and open. We didn't want any big cabinets. That's what we did. So we've got one window on both sides of the bed, some nightstand areas on both sides of the bed, and just one small basket on the wall so that we have a nice open feeling when we're on the bed area. One of my other favorite features is the wraparound LED lights. I love the ambiance that that gives. That's that warm cabin feeling that I've got. So outside of the van, in the garage area, I also wanted an outdoor kitchen. I used the same butcher block counter to the back of the van. It's a pull out kitchen area. I put my black stone on there. I can also put my induction cooktop back there and I have a nice area for cooking. The lid has a ton of storage underneath there. And then I've got a pull out drawer that gives me a ton of extra outdoor space for storing all my outdoor cooking stuff. And I like to do a lot of bushcraft stuff. So that also houses all that. Also underneath both sides of the bunk, there's a 20 gallon water tank. I wanted to be able to be off grid for a long time and not worry about sparing the water and being able to use my shower. I have a four gallon on demand hot water heater that's also underneath there. That is powered by the Blue Eddy solar generator. I have the AC200 and that's how I did my complete electrical system. It is an all-in-one lithium system. It gives me enough to power everything that I need in the van. Now the hot water heater, I put a switch right by my bed. I turn the switch on. 15 minutes later, I've got hot water. As soon as I'm done with my shower or dishes, I turn that water heater back off so that it's not pulling from the battery. And then I've got a ton of more storage on top the water containers to the right in front of the water heater. I've got a ton of extra storage. I do mount my Mr. Buddy furnace on the door because I don't want to have to move a lot of stuff to get to it. Some nights it's chilly and I just want to get it out to take the chill off the van and that is an easier access. So that's why I did that. All right, now it's time for a little Q&A. All right, the question I know everyone is gonna be interested in, how much did it cost you to completely build out this van, counting the cost of the van? I am right under about 60,000. I don't have it down to the exact dollar amount, but it is between 55 and 60,000, including the very expensive isotherm refrigerator and the composting toilet and all the solar on top. And the van. 
and the van and the van. You mentioned you're a travel nurse. Do you plan on traveling full time in your van? I do. When I get to West Virginia, which is my very first assignment, I'm going to spend the first two weeks at a campground. I didn't want to get there and not know where I was going on my first assignment. So I'll be at a campground for two weeks. And from there, I'll decide if I want to go stay there while I'm on the assignment. But when I'm not at work, because I'm only going to do three days a week, when I'm not at work, I am going to travel and tour the area and I will be boondocking during those times. You mentioned you're going to be boondocking. Does your solar panels provide enough electricity to keep your Blue Yeti powered or do you have to plug your Yeti in? So the Blue Yeti, you can charge that multiple different ways. It's a good question because I've got 600 watts of solar on the roof that I can charge that with. But when I'm driving or if it's an overcast day like today in Missouri, I have it set up where I can charge it off of the car alternator. I've got a inverter to the battery and it just plugs directly into that inverter and it charges at 350 watts while I'm driving. So that Blue Eddy solar generator will power the entire van while I'm off grid. If I don't have sun, then I just charge it off the alternator. If you could change one thing about your build, what would it be? Probably the van that I bought. After being on the road, it's not as hard to get a diesel worked on as I originally thought. So I bought a gas. It's the Ram 3500. It's the gas. And I think I would probably do a diesel if I was going to do another build. And I'd probably do a 4x4. What is your favorite thing about your van? I have so many, but I I think my favorite thing is just the warm cabiny feeling. All the finishing touches that I added to it that really gives it a really homey feeling while I'm there. It is a very, very close tie to the shower system that I put in. You recently took your van to Quartzsite and met Bob Wells and filmed a video with him. What was that experience like? Well, it was... <laughs> It was super exciting getting to meet Bob. When you're a van lifer person or want to get into van life, Bob Wells is like, you know, the grandfather of van life and boondocking and the nomad life. So it was super exciting to meet him. Just getting to do the, town, the tour and meeting him was, it was unbelievable. I can't even believe that that happened to me. All right, Johnny, thank you so much for letting my audience come inside your home, giving us a tour and sharing your build with us. Uh, it's truly amazing. I've seen a lot of these and I think this is probably my favorite van build that I've seen so far. Thank you. Filling out my cup, coffee talk on the screen porch. So in love, now you're the one I'm losing sleep for. And I hope the wrong ones slip right through your magic fingers. And I hope we find some way to fall in love like we were. Yeah, you're the only reason I was